Every year, ITU and partners work together to inspire and encourage girls to portray a future in ICTs towards bringing the gender digital divide. The aim is to encourage young women and girls to pursue their studies and careers in science, engineering, technology, and math mathematics and other fields and help them achieve their dreams. This year, the theme of Girls in ICT Day is Digital Skills for Life. This one is for the women and girls in tech. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what you have to say about the holiday? I'm sorry? Are you in tech? No, you're not, are you? Um, Somewhat. I was in tech. Yes. Oh, you were? Yeah. And what was the experience like? Was there any gender bias? Did you ever experience any gender bias of any sort? Um, yes. At one time, I remember that I had gone for an interview and um, the only reason I didn't get the job was because I was female. And um, the guy had said, the person who was trying to recruit me had said that um, they were working on a project and it would require long hours and, you know, they might not be able to accommodate, you know, the needs of a female, you know, I have to go, I have to probably in my period, I have hormonal, you know, so they'll probably be there like two weeks straight, you know, how would I cope with the guys, you know, all that. So, but um, I think it's so much better now. There's, there's, mm, there's a lot yeah. of women I think we're now. gradually building yes, the digital yes, divide. Yes, yes. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think it's great, really. Um, mm. Girls need a lot more visibility mm. closing that gap and there is a gap mm. um, closing that gap is really important uh, ICT is just even a part of it I think you know getting more girls into STEM, STEM in general yeah. Yeah. Um, just would be really really impactful because yeah. we know that women wherever we go we change mm -hmm. things we yeah. improve things yeah. um, so I'm glad that there are days like this that shine the spotlight on the fact that we need to start to or we need to continue to work on the mindset of girls yeah. to mm. not think that some of these things are for, yeah, boys, for boys and you know yeah. not for their gender. Mm. So mm. I like that there are days like this that just highlight the fact that I mean you can be anything, you can yeah. do anything you want. You can Absolutely. be whatever it is you want to be. Yes, yes, All right, yes. Dami, what did you find for us in the news today? Okay, um, well. What I found in the news today is about full subsidy or not. And I don't know if it's a good news or it's a bad news, but anyway, I would read it. <laughs> the National e Economic Council on Thursday in Abuja said it had agreed that petrol subsidy should not be removed as earlier planned for June 2023. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, disclosed this to State House correspondents shortly after the valedictory council meeting presided over by the vice president, Yemi Osibajo, at the council chambers of the presidential villa, Abuja. Well, um, you know this, I don't know, like I said earlier, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that first subsidy is being removed. I mean, I can understand that because already in the budget of Nigeria, first subsidy is supposed to be removed by June this year mm -hmm. and currently they are of the opinion that we cannot as a nation afford the full subsidy again for very maybe understandable reasons because nigeria is currently in debt so adding more debt to what we have already i don't think is anything logical by any chance but removing full subsidy is going to have effect on it's going to have a very major effect on the masses mm -hmm. because a lot of people because already many people can't afford to buy well so removing the full subsidy is just going to put everything in jeopardy and i mean it's a good thing that they are delaying it but the truth is or rather the question is is it for a good cause because truthfully i don't know if they are delaying it for a good cause because they say they are delaying it till you know they want to give the new um administration more time to prepare and all those plenty stuff but are you sure that it is not also giving the new administration avenue to loot funds because with nigeria i don't know these days you really can't tell but yeah I'll just leave it there. It's a band-aid. Rip it off. I mean, we can't know. afford it. I we mean. can't afford it. We can't afford it. <laughs> like, I mean, I can't say it's enough. Yeah. We can't afford we can't. it. We just can't. Um, I mean. But, yeah, I mean, I don't think that I'm surprised. I'm mm. not shocked at all by this extension. Mm. Um, we keep kicking the can down the road. I mean, think yeah. about the last fuel subsidy, um, fuel scarcity. Yeah. This is a decision that, I mean, we should have, even if we, you know, okay, let's not say don't rip off the band-aid. Uh, take the plaster off a little yeah, by, by little, 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 increase the price little by little by little. But 
the administration, well, let me not even say the administration. The, the federal government has decided that this is the best way to, to go. And I think we're literally just kicking the can down the road. And it's like when a snowball is rolling, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. it keeps going, it keeps getting oh, bigger. Yeah. So the yeah. impact and the effect on our numbers is just not great. But, what do but we then know? they promised that they were going to, you know, remove, take off the subsidy, mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. base so that it doesn't affect. For right, from time. time. So that, that's, that's my, that brings us back right. to what I said. Are we sure that they're actually doing this now for a good cause? Or not, but like I said, I'll just I leave it there. So. Question. Yeah. We can't no. afford it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diola, what's your oh, Okay, so this one, I particularly like this one. Um, it's um, fifth um, Payback Awards, going to be crowned best, best state in ease of doing business. And that is a pleasant surprise. Um, and this is for the second year running. Um, they arrived at this um, ranking you know, um, with um, looking at six indicators, namely infrastructure, secure and stable environment, transparency and access, accessibility of information, regulatory environment, skills and labor, and economic opportunity. And um, I mean, when we have ease of doing business, it grows the economy, it leads to nation building, and um, I, I, I don't know. I like I like seeing this. I mean, Gombe is Gombe. Yeah, Gombe. Very surprising. Okay. Gombe. <laughs> you know, for the second year running, <laughs> is the infrastructure one that I'm still questioning because I don't know about Gombe having good infrastructure. But mm. if they say so, if Pebex says so, well, well never has this that has been mentioned frequently like that. So really surprising. Really yeah. surprised. Okay. Let's see what did you find for us in the news. So my story. <laughs> <laughs> You know, sometimes you're scrolling down and you see something and you're like, I'm not sure I just saw what I saw. But let me read my headline. Parents put padlocks on daughter's graves to avoid a rape in Pakistan. See, it's not only in Nigeria that mad things are happening. But there is an increase in necrophilia cases of bodies, corpses being raped being exhumed and raped in Pakistan. To do, to do, causes problems. So when you are too strict, yeah. they have entered the market. Yeah. This time, what they yeah. entered was the graveyard. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. too much of a, yeah. too much of anything. Yeah. It's when you restrict the restrictions, yeah. too strict, too too so that the has restrictions that yeah. is making yeah. them yes. have sex yeah. with The story says yeah. Pakistan has created such a sexually frustrated society that hmm. people are now putting padlocks on the graves hmm. of their daughters to prevent them from being but what raised. Is that? I don't need to say anymore about the story like, because honestly, it's it's, it's it tells it tells itself, it tells <laughs> itself like enough said yeah. like but I mean yeah. I just wanted I wanted our viewers to get a sense that you know when you talk about this being back in Nigeria yeah. just understand hey. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The world, yeah we now have to keep what we have on the no 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 that's the height. Anyway, so for me, my story is the popular Jerry Springer is dead. He died today at 79. No. I saw this, and you know what kept ringing in my head? Jerry, Jerry, mm. Jerry. Because I remember my mom used to, she didn't allow us to watch it. So anytime she's watching it with her friend, she would tell us, send us inside. But I mean, we still used to hear it, and I still used to watch it sometimes. As well as that, now, sometimes I just go on YouTube and I look for those videos because the stories are very funny yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. But yeah, so he was one of the most influential and controversial figures in TV history. Mm -hmm. And he died today after suffering very, very. He was diagnosed, I think, a few months ago of cancer. Mm -hmm. I think two months ago or so. And he he's dead now. Oh. Sad, but mm -hmm. two greats yeah. in one week. Wow. Mm -hmm. Harry mm -hmm. Belafonte, and, and now. And mm -hmm. then now him. Sad. <sighs> <sighs> anyway. May their souls rest in peace. Amen. Oh. Amen to that. Amen. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like I said earlier tonight, we're discussing the war in Sudan and how um, Nigerians have been evacuated. Um, I think there's a video that we can play, but then before we watch that video, let's take a break and see it shortly.